The end of this congressional session will also mark the end of the political career of that committee's vice chairman, Georgia Republican Senator Saxby Chambliss. He was first elected in 1994. He spent four terms in the House and is ending his second term in the Senate. The reason he's leaving? He told me it's time and he's been frustrated by gridlock on big issues. Over the last six years, particularly the last four years, uh, I've been very frustrated. Uh, I know what our major problems are and everybody knows what they are. You know, we're 18 trillion dollars in debt. I mean, that's, uh, that's real money and it is a handicap to everything we try to do. And it's, it's not rocket science as to what has to happen. The Simpson Bowles, uh, Domenici Revelin, as well as the Gang of Six came up with the fact that you got to cut spending, you got to reform entitlements, and you got to increase revenues through reforming the tax code. We don't ha have not had the will to stand up and take the hard and tough votes that are going to have to be taken to do those three things. Why do you think, as you're leaving here, that it's not being addressed? And we're always one election away from dealing with the big things. Yeah, and, and the president's campaign on that, members of the House and the Senate campaign on solving these problems, and then when they get into office, it's more about getting reelected. And if we solve the, the debt issue, then it frees up the economy, Brett, that, that it's just got to happen, and everybody up here does know it. But hopefully that's coming with a new majority now. What's your assessment of this president, this administration? First of all, I mean, he's a nice guy. I, I like him one-on-one. -on -one. But the problem I see with this president is that he is so inexperienced from a business perspective. He does not understand, even today, after six years in office, what it's like to have to meet a payroll, what it's like to have to develop programs in our economy that will create jobs. I've been very disappointed, frankly, in the type of leadership that comes out of this White House. For the past three years, Chambliss has been vice chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, alongside chair, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. The committee may be releasing its report on the terrorist interrogation program in coming days. What are we going to learn? What's your take, take away even before we see all the details? I'm not sure how much in the way of so-called new material might be forthcoming, but what the report does say and the substance of it is that there was no actionable intelligence gathered through the process of interrogation of these terrorists. That's wrong. It's simply just not true. And for anybody to stand up and say that with a straight face just indicates that they really don't understand what happened during that period of time. Was there abuse in the program? Sure. You tell me a federal program that has not been abused. Um, uh, this program, um, for the most part, was run in a very professional way. but. It is a report that's going to cause a lot of consternation, not necessarily domestically, but I fear what's going to happen with our partners overseas. They trust us, we trust them. They're going to be exposed in this report. Seeing what you see um, from, from your seat on that committee and, and in, in the Senate, what, what's your biggest concern? My biggest concern today is homegrown terrorists. ISIL has taken a different tack, Brett, from the standpoint of recruiting jihadists, particularly American jihadists, than any other organization we've ever run into. It frightens me to no end that those are the types of individuals that are going to be recruited and that we don't pick up on from an intelligence gathering standpoint. That's interesting, of all the, the things out there, I mean, you, Iran and North Korea, um, cyber terrorism, you think that the ISIS homegrown threat is the thing that keeps you up at night? It really is because, I mean, we, we've already experienced some that we've talked about have been public and some that uh, we've disrupted that we haven't been able to talk about. But there is a real focus by this group 
um, uh, towards developing homegrown terrorists in, in the United States. Those big s scale attacks you think aren't in the cards? Well, from a cyber standpoint, I have a great fear about what may happen, and it will be major. The, the Russians, the Iranians, and, and the Chinese are getting more and more sophisticated from a cyber attack standpoint. And they would love nothing more than to try to take down some major entity or uh, some um, uh, facility, the grid, the stock market, that sort of thing. And it's coming. Not just businesses, but, but the government. Yeah. Uh, you know, between the the Pentagon and the uh, one of our nuclear facilities in the year 2013 alone, we had over a million cyber attacks per day. A million per day? A million per day. And because of our sophistication at those facilities, we were able to keep them from penetrating. But that's the type of attacks that are ongoing. You're going to miss this? There are things I will miss about the Senate. I miss my friends on both sides of the aisle in the Senate. 20 years is enough for me. I had a great run. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we've accomplished a lot. I'm leaving at the top of my game, and you don't always get to do that in politics. Well, Senator, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great Appreciate to be with you.